God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The day that I came to the Lord Jesus Christ myself, April 25th, 1987, You see, I live what I preach, and I preach what I live. The Lord Jesus Christ. I was a vile, wicked sinner that knew not God, and God knew not me. I would not even testify of the things that I have done before I was saved. Before I met the Lord Jesus Christ. But I was a young punk. I was involved in alcohol and drugs. I was a renegade, a rebel, a Roman Catholic. And I knew not the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was not known to God. On April 25th, 1987, in Waterford, Connecticut, with an open King James Bible, the glory of God and the light of God shone upon a wicked, vile sinner as I was. And a man with the Bible told me I was going to hell. I was a sinner. I was condemned. There was nothing I could do. Religion, the Catholic Church that I was in, couldn't save my soul. I was a sinner before a God adding more and more to my sins. I will not tell you what those sins are because they're under the blood. And I knelt down by a coffee table in my grandma's living room. And I met the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. All my sins that I, were, I was involved in, all the sins that I was active in, all the sins that I was verbing, verb is action. All the sins that I was born in through the nature of Adam. On April 25th and Saturday afternoon, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I came out of the world, I came out of religion, and I met Jesus and I became saved. And it was nothing that I did. I didn't preach. I gave no money. I wasn't in a church house. I was in a living room at a coffee table in Waterford, Connecticut with an open Bible asking God to forgive a sinner that I was at 18 years old. And an 18 year old punk, I had gathered up sins. But I was born into sin. And if I would have died before April 25th, 1987, I would have died and gone to hell. And would have been worthy so. For they were my sins. And God met me on April 25th, 1987. I knelt down at a coffee table and I asked God through Jesus Christ to save my soul. And I was saved by grace and none of my works. I met God, Jesus Christ, in a living room at a coffee table of many, many years in a Catholic church where I never met Jesus. 
I met the Jesus that's the Lamb of God that to take away the sin of the world. And he took away my sins April 25th, 1987. He washed me in his blood and cleansed me. God met with me in Waterford, Connecticut on April 25th. He met me through the cross of Calvary of Jesus Christ. He met me through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. He didn't meet me in the Catholic Church. He didn't meet me in the water. He didn't meet me with my bank account. He met a vile, wicked sinner at the knees at the cross of Jesus, and the cross of Calvary of my life was a coffee table. And I met God. And I met the God who's Jesus Christ. I met the God's not willing that any should perish, that he reach an 18-year-old punk, and he saved that 18-year-old punk as I called upon God. I called upon God my Savior. I didn't call upon God my religion. I didn't call upon God my cluck. I called upon God Almighty through the Lord Jesus Christ. I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and I was saved. My name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, April 25th, 1987, in the reservations of going to heaven through Jesus Christ alone. My birth date, my new birth, was April 25th, 1987. It don't matter that I was born September 6th. September 6th, I was born into sin. On April 25th, 1987, I was born. I was reborn. I had the Holy Spirit that came into me that day and has dwelt in me since. I came to know God through Jesus Christ, not religion. I thank God he called me out of religion. I thank God he called me out of the world. I thank God that he saved my soul through Jesus and only by Jesus. Did I give money? No. Did I do good things? No. Did I go to a church? No. What did I do? I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was saved. I came to God, the sinner that I was, a vile, wicked sinner. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of our sin. And all my sins from birth to April 25th, 1987, as vile and as wicked a sinner I was, all my sins have been washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no sin. And when the devil comes up, well, what about this? Well, devil, I'm sorry, it's under the blood. And if God don't remember, ought not I to remember? And the devil will bring up those sins and, hey, it's under the blood. And when it's under the blood of God through Jesus Christ, it is forgotten. It is erased. It is not there. It won't stand for me at the judgment seat. I have been washed. And I have been cleaned through the blood of Jesus Christ. On April 26, 1987, I began to preach hell. I was saved... April 25th, I began to preach hell, April 26th. I went to my dad and I told him, I said, Dad, I said, you're going to hell. I've been preaching over 33 years. I've been saved over 33 years. And I had nothing to do with my salvation. It's all of God. It all belongs to Jesus. It is all of
son Jesus who suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures it has all been clean my title is cleared my sins have been paid for through the blood of Jesus Christ I am cleansed through God through Jesus Christ upon Calvary's hill I am clean I have been reconciled back to God by the mediator and the mediator between me and God wasn't Mary it was Jesus Christ I came out of Mary I came out of the Pope I came out of the Catholic I was a Polish Roman Catholic and I would have died a Polish Roman Catholic and been in hell until the day I met Jesus and the day that I met Jesus and I asked Jesus to cleanse me of my sins and to save my soul, I was saved. I was born again. April 25th, 1987. I am washed not by water. I am washed by the blood of God through the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. And it had been a week since I set foot in the church. I was saved on a Saturday afternoon. The last time I was in church was a Sunday morning. Count back six days from April 25th. I was saved in the living room, 1987, on April 25th, in my grandmother's house at a coffee table in Waterford, Connecticut. I met Jesus Christ. I was saved. My name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life through the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. You can meet Jesus Christ right now at Magolia and Wall Street in Daytona Beach. You can meet Jesus Christ upon a, a, a little grassy area. You can meet Jesus Christ upon a brick area. You can meet him out in the middle of the street of Magolia and Wall Street today if you were to kneel down and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you all your sins through the finished work of Calvary where he hung on the cross and he said, It is finished. You need not add anything to it. You do not add to God's salvation because when you add to God's salvation, you have an artificial preservative that God will not accept. An artificial preservative is one is a religion. And name your religion. They're all just as hellish bound. You can go to hell as a Baptist. You can go to hell as a Roman Catholic. You can go to hell as a Lutheran. You can go to hell as an atheist. But you will not go to hell through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, 33 years ago in the living room at a coffee table, an 18-year-old punk knelt down and his name was known by God in the Lamb's Book of Life because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's not anything I've done. It's no charities. No walking ladies across the street. Jesus Christ saved my soul. And I'm still a sinner today. And I'm not proud to say I'm a sinner today. But as I sin as a Christian, as you can sin as a Christian, you can confess your sins and he will forgive you and he will cleanse you of your sins. You see, being saved does not stop you from sinning. It took me a few years to put the Bacardi away. It took me a while to put the Bacardi away. And yet God gave me the victory over the Bacardi. It took me many, many years later to get victory over the Marlboro. Marlboro almost killed me. I was diagnosed with COPD, emphysema, and the doctor gave me three months to live. Would you like a cannoli, sir? Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for offering. 
The doctor said you, I was saved. I was freshly married with a child. And I went into the doctor's office. He called me and my wife into the doctor's office. And he says, you got three months to live. That's about 1999. I was saved. If I would have died, I'd gone to heaven through Jesus Christ. Before April 25th, 1987, if I would have died, I would have gone to hell. In the doctor's office, 1999, the lung doctor, he says, you got three months, you got emphysema, you got COPD from your sin. Your sin of Marlboro and the tobacco products and smoking pipes, the wages of sin is death. You know what your sin is going to do for you? It's going to kill you. And you are a sinner, for the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My tobacco use had killed my lungs. I had emphysema, COPD, and I had six months, three months, and six months to live. I forget what, how long it was. But by the mercy and grace of God, 33 years after my salvation in 2020, I could be here preaching about hell and preaching about the salvation of Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ that you too can get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You too can be saved. You are not so vile and wicked enough that God will say, no, can't do it. You will say, preacher, I'm involved with this sin, and God can cleanse you of that sin. You've got to remember, everybody, for all have sinned. There's no degrees of sin. And yet there's the Lamb of God which will take away the sin of the world. You can be saved. And you can know that you're saved. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Take it from an 18-year-old punk who came to Jesus Christ at Calvary and got saved. And that 18-year-old punk is today preaching to you the very same Jesus. The very same Jesus that that 18-year-old punk got saved is the same Jesus that can save you. It is this very same Jesus that has changed my life and changed my direction from heaven where I was going to hell. And people, I was going to hell. I was going to hell as a tobacco user, as an alcohol consumer, as a Roman Catholic that did not know Jesus. I was going to hell. And I won't mention the other sins. But all those sins and the victory over those sins came across upon the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. And I know it. And I know when I die, I know where I'm going of a surety. That when these eyes close to death, I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord who saved me. There is no, nobody and nothing else that can save your soul unlike God through Jesus Christ. You can turn to a religion and a religion will turn you into hell one day. There are Baptists, there are Catholics, there are Presbyterians, there are Mormons, there are Muslims in hell today. Because said religions can't save your soul. Religion 
is man-made, Jesus Christ is God-approved. Look at to me, I had a religion. I had the Roman Catholic Church, St. Mary's Star of the Sea, New London, Connecticut, and it was damning my soul to hell. I never met Jesus Christ in the Catholic Church. I met Jesus Christ through the King James Bible on my knees at Calvary's where I met Jesus and I became a born again Bible believing Christian. My name was written down in the glory. My name was written down in the last book of life and the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice when a sinner repents. The angels rejoice the day that I was saved, and the angels can rejoice now if you were to get saved. The angels don't rejoice over football or NASCAR or any other nonsense. The angels in heaven rejoice over a lost man that comes to put his faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus. The only angels that will rejoice for you to go to church and get baptized and do this and do that, the only angels that will rejoice of that are the angels of the devil. Not the holy angels of God. Church can't save you. Being good can't save you when the Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. You're not good enough, and you will never be good enough. I wasn't good enough, and I could never be good enough. That's why I came to Jesus, and I got saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That is the salvation. Keep your money. I ain't here for your money. I am here for you to know about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I'm not going to invite you out to my church. I am going to preach with you right here about Jesus Christ. Now, if you get saved, if you are saved, and you want to know about a church, I can help you find a church as a saved individual. But if you're lost... Church is not going to save you. Matter of fact, church is not a building. A church is a group of people who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't go to church if you're not saved because the church is saved people. It's plain and simple to see and to believe. <coughs> That Jesus Christ saved this miserable brat. Jesus Christ saved this 18-year-old punk. When this 18-year-old punk, punk put his faith and trust upon the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. My name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Not what I have done, but what Jesus Christ has done. And if you were to come to me and say, uh, Preacher, how are you get to heaven? By Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. If I were to ask you, say, how are you get to heaven? I go to church, I was back. Eh, you're not going. You're not making it. Because for you to get to heaven, if it's not Jesus Christ, you're not going. You have been deceived. Because you don't get to heaven by going to church. You don't get to heaven by doing good. You don't get to heaven by what you do. You get to heaven by what Jesus Christ done. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is what will save you. The Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He didn't say believe on the Baptist. He didn't say believe on the Catholic. He didn't say believe in Joseph Smith. He didn't say believe in 
It says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Anything else is hell. 